We're now ready for the second section of this first talk. And we're going to begin the prologue. I think I'm going to begin by reading it. It's only 18 verses, but it is so beautiful. I'm going to read it from a translation of my own. Not much different than everybody else's. It can't be. Uh, but it's the one in front of me now. It goes like this. In the beginning, the Word was. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Everything came to be through Him. And without Him, not one thing came to be. What has come to be in Him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not grasp it. There was a man sent from God. His name was John. He came for a witness that he might witness concerning the light that all might believe through him. This one was not the light, rather that he might witness concerning the light. He was the true light, which enlightens every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him, and the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own did not receive him. As many as received him, to them he gave power to become children of God, to the believers in his name, who are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, intended among us, and we saw his glory, glory as of an only begotten from the Father, filled with grace and truth. John witnesses to him and cries out, saying, This was he of whom I said, The one coming after me ranks ahead of me, because before I existed, he already was. From his fullness we have all received grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came to be through Jesus Christ. God no one has seen ever. The only begotten God, who is in the bosom of the Father, he made him known. So you can see that's the end of the prologue. How it anticipates the whole gospel. It's all there. In the beginning was the word. Now why does John use this term word? Um, now he's not the first or the only, I would say, not the first either, uh, to go back to the eternal pre-existence with the Father. There are four other texts, at least, that do this. Huh? The letter to the Colossians, where he's talked about in the chapter 1. The letter to the Ephesians. Then, in the letter to the Philippians, though he, there, he was in, by nature God, to, in the, it was in the form of God, didn't consider being equal to God a thing to be clung to. He humbled himself and so forth. And in the letter to the Hebrews, where he's described as being the, uh, the one through whom the universe was made, uh, who is the uh, uh, glory of the Father and the imprint of his substance. Now, all of these, including the prologue of John, after describing Jesus' Jesus's divine dignity and radiance, talk about his time on earth, and then of his glorification and his eternal existence now with his beautiful, resurrected, glorified body in heaven forever, where he takes care of us, speaks to us, guides us, puts us into his church in the safety of this body of his. And so the prologue does this in a very beautiful and dramatic way, but
but it's not the only attestation to the divine pre-existence of the Word, though only John calls him the Word. Now, there are some interesting texts where you have this notion of uh, the Word. Huh? Uh, it's, a, it's a biblical notion. Huh? By the Word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Uh, you sent forth your Word and healed them. And so, the, the great saints and mystics of the Old Testament had an intuition. It was as though they saw God's footprints and could figure out something about God but didn't know how to say it. One of the commentators said a beautiful phrase, the word or the wisdom or the spirit even for the other person shared God's identity but they weren't separate from God. Well, that's as far as the Hebrews could go, as far as anybody could go, until Jesus is standing there with us and praying to the Father. Then we see. And then he pours out the Holy Spirit. And so, uh, it's not the only place. Uh, and there is all this presupposition, pre preparation for this. Huh? We have such beautiful texts. Um, there's one from Irenaeus that I'll uh, read to you after the break uh, where he talks about how the Word came and talked to Abraham, Moses, the Logos came. And that we know now. Now, they couldn't go that far uh, in the Old Testament, because you need the Word of God standing there with you. Uh, and you watch him pray to Abba. And then you watch who he is. You get intuitions. And then finally he says things. The Father and I are one. Uh, but I like the, the image of footprints. Huh? They're following God, and he's leaving his footprints. And they're looking at these footprints and learning things about God. And they speak, as I said. But there are other images for God and so forth that are not like these two, word and spirit. Somehow, as one commentator puts it very beautifully, even in the Old Testament, they somehow share in God's identity. But they can't figure out how they couldn't be just God. And they, they are divine, we now know. And so, John's prologue is telling us this. See, in the beginning, the beginning. Think for yourself, where is the beginning of that use of the term beginning? Genesis. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Okay, so what is John saying? In the beginning, the Word already was. You can put that beginning any place you want. The Word already was. The Word is eternal. He's not bound by time or by created limitations. In the beginning, the Logos, uh, the Word, was. And the Word was with God. Now, the word that Paul John uses here was with God. He was pros ton teon, which is toward God. It indicates a certain movement and a relationship. You see, theos, whom Jesus will call his whole time and will reveal to us his name. His name? Father. In chapter 17, I reveal your name to them. The name? Father. And so we have here, you see, that the word was pros don deon. The end of the prologue is also said not only to be toward God, but to be in the bosom of God. An expression of unbelievable intimacy and affection. 
and the Word was God. Anything you can say about Theos, you can say about the Logos, except that he's Logos and he's Father. Everything else, you see, and the Word was God. Ketheos im holoyos. From the beginning. He was in the beginning with God. And so you have again this notion, huh? That he was in the beginning, proston theon. The beginning is deeper and, and wider than creation. The beginning has a beginning then. But beginning in the sense of origin is God the creator. So in the beginning, the word was. Put the beginning any place you want. God, the Father, was, and the word was. And now describes his relationship to us. Everything came to be through him. Now why? Why does John say through him? Well, the, the preposition in Greek implies, among other things, like model. A father gazes on his son with infinite love and joy. And what does he see? He sees himself. The Logos is the total image of the father. So the father sees there all that he is. And as it were, gazing on the Logos, all the potentials that he has, he realizes some of them by creating. So the Logos, you see, is it's through him. I hope that's clear. Uh, you see, you see, well, how does John know all this? Well, after the break, I'm going to read you a text by a woman who had three years of homeschooling in her life and will probably be called a doctor of the church one day. Because God enlightened her. Well, God enlightened John. John is a mystic. He's called Hoteologos. But you see, that doesn't mean a fellow has a degree and goes to teach. It means somebody who has mystical, transforming knowledge of God and speaks from that knowledge about the Trinity. That's a theologian. Did I tell you that story of St. Teresa of Avila discussing with Jesus? about the Trinity, I didn't, you know. I just have time to tell you now. So, he explains, Jesus explains to her life in the Trinity, as it were. And she ends by saying, and this, I believe, is what they call theology. Because that's the traditional idea. Jesus explains the Trinity to you, and then you're a theologian. If you have a degree, fine. If you don't, you're still a theologian because you know by direct enlightenment the Trinity. That is the whole, that's why John is, is the last and greatest of the Gospels because he's so enlightened about the identity of Jesus. So everything came to be through him and without him not one thing came to be. We're going to stop there and then pick up the rest of the story of creation in the next session.